Okay, so here yeah, let's now talk about um, an example of a classification algorithm called KNN or K nearest neighbors. Nearest neighbors. So here yeah, we're just going to do the high level stuff. We're going to get deep into KNN later, but for now we just do the high level, um, high level stuff, right? So what KNN does is it estimates estimates conditional. It estimates conditional distribution distribution of the classes Y given the observations that we have given X and then classi classifies classifies a given observation classifies a given observation to the um, to the class with the highest probability with the highest probability. So I'm writing everything. I just want <coughs> people to follow through um, with my explanations here. <coughs> so this is the highest estimated probability. Highest est estimated probability. All jargon. What does this really mean? What does this really mean? So what is going to happen is these are the steps that will happen, right? So let's say we have um, K classes. I don't not K classes. Let's say we have some, well, however many classes we have, right? Let's pick, let's pick an, an integer K. Uh, pick integer K. We will have picked an integer K. K. Cool. So after we have picked integer K, what will happen is now we have, we have, an, we have an observation X naught. We have an observation X naught. Let's say this is the test observation test observation the KNN classifier what it will, it will do is it will identify it will identify K points K points in the training data so it will identify K points in the training data that are that are closest closest to x naught to our test observation right so it finds let's say it finds this n naught n n n zero or n naught n naught uh, observations that are close to this x naught that we want to see right and then step three it estimates it estimates the estimates conditional probabilities For 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 each class, for each class, well, we can just write class uh, class J as the fraction of uh, points in n naught, right? Um, whose response value is equal to whose uh, response? Oh, jargon, but I'm going to explain this um, better. Um, equals J. Right? We're going to explain with, a, with an example. So, then, what it does there is the probability of the class being equal to J given our obs ob observed um, test or test our Test, test observation these these probabilities are given by 1 over k summation of i it looks so complicated but actually it is not this equation is not so basically this part here it is calculating the proportion proportion of each Proportion of each class, um, proportion of each class in, let's say in the neighborhood or near that x naught in the neighborhood of x naught. That's what is is basically saying, right? So this is basically saying. So here it's saying, I being in the neighborhood, being in the neighborhood, because we said 
the n naught the n naught is every point that is close to n naught uh, that is close to x naught right so i in the neighborhood of um i so for every every point i is a point for every point in the neighborhood we are going to get the proportion we are going to get the proportion for each of those classes right that is going to be the probability let's look at an example let's look at an example and stop looking at an equation let's uh explain this using one example oh yeah so so step four so step four it then applies applies uh something called the bear's rule it applies bear's rule uh and classifies classifies that test observation or x naught to to the class with the largest probability that we have calculated here probability for each of the classes that are around probability for each of the classes for each of the classes that are in the neighborhood for each of the classes that are in the neighborhood that's simply what we are going to do so let's look at an example or explain this to make to make it more concrete right so suppose we have something like this a situation like this let me get a good diagram here so i draw it nicely mm. suppose what we have is a situation where we have um let me see what color i can use here green okay i'm going i can use green so suppose we have green here green circles here right green circles so these are observations these are going to be observations in our training data we have those green observations in our training data perfect right and then suppose in our training data as well we have uh these blue dots here so they could be anything so they could they, i'm just saying blue dots but they could be observations with specific income right it's going it's going to be okay people with specific income people with specific so it's, we are plotting in their income age whatever it is so let's imagine this is income imagine that is age right and then we plotted them we plotted them like this the person's income the person's age and then we came up with this right or whatever it is, the people who prefer the people who prefer orange juice over people who prefer uh, apple juice these are the, the green people who prefer apple juice and then the blue people prefer uh, orange juice whatever it is we just, we've just plotted our observations like that right and we have plotted them in different colors because we know that oh this person who is here the blue prefers orange juice so we're giving a blue color orange juice blue color orange orange juice blue color orange juice blue color orange juice blue color orange juice blue color and then the green ones are oh, apple juice your income and your age cool and you prefer orange juice the green color uh, so, so just to make it easier for you to see what we're trying to do here so now imagine a person walks into the room it's at, it's at a party walks into a room and then we ask them what is your income so let's just pretend um so this is going to be income right and then this is their age let's just say right and then we ask them what is your income they tell us what is your age and they tell us and the person we go and we plot them here so now we want to estimate mm, okay that is their income that is their age what juice do they prefer do they prefer orange juice or apple juice that's what we're trying to do with knn we're just trying to put people into classes people who love orange juice and people who love um apple juice orange and apple juice right classes qualitative very very qualitative so what we can do there is um we can use um knn to predict the class of that black cross let's assume that we start with step number one you remember step number one we are going to pick an integer k so let's assume that we say k equal to three what does that mean what it means is basically we are saying choose three points closest to my x naught my x naught here is my black cross because that is my test observation right so we are going to choose three points closest to x naught 
as you can see is it is this point here so it could be this circle here so we're going to create a circle around x that it has the three points that we want our k equal to three that we want cool that is step number one right and this circle here that is the neighborhood that we're talking about the neighborhood of x that is the neighborhood here neighborhood with k equal to three neighborhood k equal to 20 it is a larger circle because we have to include inc we have to include 20 20 uh, points cool uh, so when we look at that circle can you see in that circle it com comprises one green so in that circle there we have one one green circle and we have um two two blue two blue circles cool i think you can see that you can see that clearly right so now the next step uh let me look, look at my notes um so what did we say we said um cool we, we have done step two where we identified the ones that are closest to x naught that those are the ones in the neighborhood so step number three is saying it estimates conditional probabilities so let's look at how it does that what is the probability of of being green in that neighborhood it's obviously going to be how many green there are over uh how many total points we have in that region right so for the probability of being green in there is going to be equal to we have one green over how many points do we have one two three we have three three greens so it's a so it's what so we have three total points so it's one third what is the probability of being blue so probability of being blue it is equal to how many do, blues do we have we have two blues over total number of points that we have in our training data it is three so our training data in the neighborhood so it's going to be two-thirds so the probability of being blue is two-thirds the probability of being green is one-third in that particular neighborhood of k equal to three for for our for our black x right so what is k and so this is this step here step number three with this equation that probably scared some people but that's that's exactly what it does and then step number four, it then applies Bayer's rule and classifies X naught to the class with the largest probability. Which one is the largest probability here? It's going to be blue. So which means it's going to classify this unknown X cross as blue. We then give our person orange juice. We're going to say, based on the three that are close to you in income and age, you are you probably want orange juice as well this is the basics of knn very very simple like that very simple like that right what is difficult about knn is deciding this k equal equal to three how do you decide that the choice of k is is drastic effect on the knn classifier as you can see if our k is equal to one i'm running out of page here and i don't want to delete so imagine we had points like that. I just put them in the same color, but um, they could be, they could be, since they are different classes, they could be different colors, whatever it is. I'm just saying this, imagine that is our training data set. And we say k equal to 1. k equal to 1 will result in, in a neighborhood that is just around each point. So now when we are calculating probabilities, we're calculating probabilities of the point being equal to the point itself. There's no other point in there. There's no other point in there, right? So this um, this will not really, really separate a new point. Imagine now we put a point there. What is the neighborhood of a test test observation here? It's going to be the test observation itself. We cannot qualify. We cannot classify it. You know what I mean? When k equal to one, because we're saying the neighborhood around one point. It it, it 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 will be very difficult oh no it's not it's actually not going to be like that it's not actually not going to be we're going to choose the one we're going to choose one point that is closest to this x i actually like there. we're going to choose the point that is closest one point when k equal to one we're going to choose one point that is closest to our x it could be this point here and then we were going to classify x as related as the same class as this point 
that introduces so many errors. It is so, so many errors. Because maybe this is just closed by a very, very small amount compared to this. Maybe X is actually close, is actually in this group, but just because this one is the closest. So the, the, the K equal to 1 will be what we call overfitting. This will be overfitting, right? And then when it's too flexible, imagine we have how many points do we have here? One in the training data set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Imagine we did k equal to seven. It was going to say, oh, for my x here, what is my neighbor with that that encompasses seven points? It went, it's going to encompass everything. It's going to encompass everything. And then it becomes useless. It becomes useless. The classifier is now useless because it encompasses everything. How do you calculate probabilities there? It now becomes so terrible to even to even calculate. Now we are just taking the probability, the highest probability in the whole data set. In the whole data set, we are now just taking the highest probability. Now we don't even matter if the point was there, or the point was there, or the point was there, or the point was closer to these two points. It won't even matter. Even if it was far, it was out here. If it is out there, maybe visually you'd say, ah, it, it has to be in the same group as these guys. But if we say k equal to 7, we're including everything. So now we, we are now just estimating maybe, maybe these are the points that have the highest probability. So we're saying it belongs to this group here. Mm, maybe not. You know what I mean? So if it's k equal to 7 or k equal to all the uh, all the data points, it's a useless, it's a useless uh, predictor, right? And by doing that, we are increasing... Uh, no, so by by reducing k, by reducing k, we are increasing flexibility. So flexibility increases as k decreases because it becomes like fewer fewer numbers, and now we are starting to just limit the boundary to one to to a single point where overfitting happens. Flexibility goes with overfitting, right? So if overfitting happens with k equal to 1, that's where uh, flexibility is. So flexibility increases as k decreases. As we increase our k, our k, we are becoming useless, like a straight line, like a linear model. We are becoming useless, but uh, flexibility is decreasing, right? So now let's just quickly look at... Um, the last part the last part just says um as k increases method becomes less flexible and produces a decision tree that is more close to linear so it becomes linear like this becomes more useless right so when we are doing our our bias variance trade-off flexibility this is going to be flexibility right so when we're doing a bias variance trade-off this is obviously going to be our irreducible error we've accepted that one what what then happens with our training training it's going to we said our training goes down it goes down it's going to go down like that it might be jerky jerky because it's not continuous continuous data so it's going to be jerky like that or with edges and then our test our test error is going to be jerky as well but it will have it will have a um, it will have a, a U shape like that. But what is going to be on the X axis here? What is being determined by flexibility? It is our K. And we're saying flexibility increases going to the right. So which means here we will we'll, we'll be pl plotting plotting our um, our error. You remember our error that we said here, our misclassifications. Uh, and on the x-axis we will plot 1 over k because we want our flexibility to increase here it will be here it's low flexible because our k will be large so 1 over 7 here, 1 over 7 is here there's low flexibility here when k equal to when k equal to 1 there is a high flexibility so it's going to be 1 over 1 which is 1 so, so here on the x-axis we plot 1 over 1 over k so our training error consistently uh, declines as 1 over k uh, increases or as flexibility increases and our test error de declines in a characteristic u-shape like this our test error perfect so we are done with chapter 1 theory in the next video we are going to try do a lab where we see these things in coding in R and how we come up with the models and stuff like that. How do we see 
all this coming together. So stay tuned for that lab video.